Hey guys, it's Lemming Rush. Today I'm going to try to teach you how games are won and lost in World of Tanks. Now, this is going to be the basic premise of how pretty much every single game uh, unfolds. So, as you can see, we're on the map Erlenberg. Erlenberg will sort of apply to every single... Like, it's very similar. You've got a 1-2 line, which is one flank. You've got a middle. And then you've got the 9-0, which is typically the other flank. So, in my opinion, this is a really good representation of... Um, pretty much every single map in this game. Obviously there are some exceptions, but you know, you get the general idea. Now, as you can see, typically on Erlenberg, the way teams will deploy is they will send some to the 1-2 line, and like a lot of campers and TDs and whatnot will sit up on the 9-0. Now, this has been changing recently. Whole teams will be going down the 9-0. This isn't a very good strategy in my opinion, but uh, you're gonna see I'm playing the 1-2 because I can find, normally I'll get the most damage here, and normally I can have the most impact, but naturally you're gonna see I'm, I'm finding out that I'm alone very, very quickly. So, um, I get shot by the 430. This is when it like actually hits me that I'm alone and I should probably expect to see five or six tanks against me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to run away. Um, and you can see our whole team is up on the 9-0. I've got one E75 with me, but you know we're, we're not going to hold off realistically seven or eight tanks. What you're going to notice though is like even though I don't think we can successfully win against these seven or eight or you know however many tanks I expect to find, they've got an IS-7 and a 113 on the zero line. Now how wins happen is uh, you need to win at least one side of the map. Typically you'll like a close game, typically the way it will unfold is you'll win one side and they'll win another. So you sort of have each team has about 50% of the map. In this case, I'm not expecting us to be a, a win, but what I'm going to try to do is I want to hold them off because if we lose both sides of the map in the sense that if they have people up on the 9-0 and they suddenly, you know, and they're able to push through and come behind us, it's really easy to predict a loss, right? If they're able to surround us and shoot at us, you know, you don't have to be Erwin Rommel to figure out that you're not going to win that fight. So uh, you're going to see what I'm going to do right here is I'm trying to stall them. Now, this is going to be really important because, uh, <laughs> how do I describe this? Normally, my advice is to go with the Lemming Rush. Like, if your whole team Lemming trains down the zero line like we are now, I mean, they're not really Lemming training, but they're camping, you need to be with them because you need to get them to push through before the enemy comes around and behind and comes behind you. Now, the thing is, they have an IS-7 and a 113, and who knows how many campers on A0. I don't want to play the zero line. I'm not going to go fight a, a hull down 113 in, in a leopard, right? Like it doesn't make sense. So what I'm doing is I'm relying on my team to hopefully push the 9-0 and I'm trying to buy time. You're going to notice I'm not doing a lot of damage, but me just being here is going to sort of present enough of a threat to prevent them from flanking my team. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Now I want to stress this point. Typically, unless you have a huge advantage like I do here with your range, I'm able to generally shoot at them without getting lit. You're not going to want to be fighting like four enemies with a leopard. But you can also see I've got a grill, a TVP, and a T54 who are, um, you know, doing their best to help. And we're sort of pushing the 9-0. Now, this game to a lot of people wouldn't really look, uh, it actually ends up in a raffle stomp. This doesn't look like it would be a raffle stomp at this point. You can see they've got a 113. Realistically, based on that 113 that, uh, position, he's probably got a ton of hit points. Where he is, he'll probably be hauled down. So what I'm expecting right now is I'm expecting us not to be able to push the 9-0, and I'm sort of just trying to buy the team. Like Even though I don't think it's very realistic that we're going to win the 9-0, I'm still trying to buy my team time. Now you're going to notice they had an IS-57 uh, Heavy who pushed down to F3. In my mind, he's going to start pushing up to the 5 line. That's where he's going to have side shots on me. And now is when I'm going to have to start abandoning. And I might need to um, sort of help out and take charge of the 0 line and make sure we clip, like clean that out so we're not surrounded. So that's sort of like the mindset that I have right now. Obviously, I want to win the 9-0 so we're not surrounded. I, I just said that. And you can see the 57 Heavy, like I predicted, is coming to flank me. So I'm going to look for shots on him. It turns out that we end up killing the Type 4 Heavy who was camping a lot easier than I thought we would. So I don't actually have to go over to the 9-0 and take charge. And um, the 113, who is actually full HP for whatever reason, he he decided to run away. Now, this is really interesting because to me, it looks like he just threw a game, right? Like, um, how do I describe this? Basically, they had a full HP heavy tank, and this is what I found out after the game, obviously, who um, refused to be hauled down and fight a couple, you know, tanks. The same way I'm doing to them, he refused to do that, except he's in a better tank that's more suited for that. You can see the 54 wants us to run away, but 
very, very quickly, we're finding out that the 113 is running away, and he's just giving us the whole map. So this is when we sort of secure the raffle stomp. You can see I fell back. They didn't take advantage of that. They didn't push up to K3, um, and it allows me to even move up again. And as they try to push, I can put side shots into the E4, and anyone else who tries to make a play similar to him. You're going to notice, though, that this game wasn't... <laughs> How do I describe it? It was still in the balance. This 113, if he had just stayed here and supported his teammates very easy like if he had been competent he would have won them the game i feel because a leopard one uh even if even though i'm a unicum and whatnot would not have been able to uh reliably defend against the 183 and e4 etc etc so um hopefully this displays my point the reason this is a raffle stomp is because we were able to hold off the one two my team was able to push the nine zero and suddenly like the game is won because we we won against insurmountable odds right like they had five tanks pushing into us um, and then their three tanks that were sort of isolated gave up the fight really easily. And so that's when Raffle Stomp happens. It could have very easily gone into their favor if I had simply just given them the uh, one two line. So, what a lot of people will do is if they're in a Leopard one, they'll think, oh, it's a sniping tank. I can't take hits, I'm in a Leopard. They will like just give up the whole map. If I had done that, they would have had everything, you know, west of the five line. They would and and their 113 and whatnot in B0. Um, you know, assuming he's a competent player and whatnot, they would have had everything in, in the five line and the zero line, and they would have just had us surrounded. So this is a really important lesson. I, I understand it's like a, it looks like the result looks like we had an easy win, but if we hadn't been defending this, this Western side, um, as, as strongly as we did, I don't think this game would have been nearly as close. So, uh, hopefully you guys, you know, hopefully this was helpful. Maybe I'll go into a math tactic and explain this, but, uh, this is this is this is how I turned this into a 6k damage game right here. Obviously, this is brawling. I, I don't feel like it's necessary to really commentate over it. One thing I do want to mention though is the 113 damaged my fuel tanks. You're gonna see just before he shoots me, I repair them. He damages my fuel tanks again, so he almost lit me lit me on fire right there. So you can see. Uh, Obviously, I don't want to be fighting a 113 from the front. There's a grill pushing into him. I'm going to get behind this guy. He's going to focus me down. I put a shot into his track, or at least try to. I'm going to circle him because I'm a leopard and I can. I'm going to use the grill for cover. I don't want him to set me on fire. He shoots HG, misses, and uh, <laughs> we should be fairly easy, you know, able to finish him off. You're going to see even it, like people just love to focus Unicom's down. <laughs> even though the game was over, he probably would have got a lot more damage if he shot at the grill, but. Uh, he wanted to kill me, and this is going to be the game-ending ram. So I take a shot here. I still haven't figured out how to pen these tanks, and we are able to finish him off. So let's go take a look at the uh, end plates, and I'll try to explain how this happened on a map tactic. <laughs> All right. Alrighty, so this is sort of like how the game played out. They had an extreme advantage on the one line. The reason we were able to sort of prevent this from being a ruffled stomp on their side is because we prevented them from getting up to the five line. Obviously, when you've got a billion camping TDs who are in this position, if they have people on the five line shooting into them, there's nothing they can do. So it was very important for me to hold this. If, let's say, I had taken... Um, my advice, the way, like my typical advice, the way I would have had to play it is I would have had to come around and I would have had to get our team to push this side aggressively. Obviously they had a 113 who I thought was a good player. Um, typically you'll find good players in 113s, it's just the way it is, and uh, an IS-7 right here. And as a Leopard 1, I don't want to go brawl them, especially when you've got a bajillion campers back here. So the strategy and the reason this worked is because this even though it took these guys forever, uh, myself, the grill, and, and you know everyone else were able to buy the team time uh, and give them the opportunity to push in. Now, the reason I think, um, like not to blame this 113 or call him out, um, I feel like he sort of lost them the game. In a sense, this Leopard 1, like myself and the rest of the team, we weren't going to be able to hold out. All it would have taken is one lucky shot from that 183 who was up here, and uh, you know my tank would have been deleted. So we weren't able to hold out, especially once that 57 had come uh, to this position. If that 113 had just held this position for a little longer and he was full HP, it, the possibility is very real that they could have just come up behind us and flanked us. Now, obviously, um, I'm not a puppy. I would have done my best to stall them, but the best play at that point is let's pretend I had given up this 
this line right here and they were able to get up to here would have been to try to push into them. And again, that's sort of what our team did. The reason this was a raffle stomp is because we held up the majority of their team while they sort of failed to hold up the majority of our team and we were able to come around, get behind them and, uh, you know, fight them in bad positions. Like they had a sniping type for heavy. So, um, I understand this was was a raffle stump, but in my opinion, it really demonstrates how wins and losses happen in this game. Next video is going to be one of myself in a 50M on Overlord where we lose in a raffle stump, and it's the same thing. Basically, we lose one flank, they get behind us, and you know that secures the game for the enemy team. But in this scenario, because we were able to hold off, you know, prevent them from pushing through, we were able to get behind them. And again, that secures the game for our team. So let's go take a look at the end plates. I really hope this was beneficial. Obviously, uh, I'm going to continue doing replays like this because it's a big topic. Um, but hopefully I was able to simplify it for you. So there's that. Holy shit, someone download... Why would you download this? Anyways, uh, as you can see, that was a mastery badge. For this leopard one, it's about 1,200 base XP for a mastery badge, 85,000 credits, 1,800 XP with a premium account, high caliber, etc., etc. 6.2k damage, 1,231 base XP. Now, in my opinion, this wasn't a huge, like, epic carry and whatnot. Obviously, it was a ruffle stump win. But again, I think like I played it, uh, I think I played it very well. At the end of my stream, when I was streaming this, I felt like it was one of the best replays or games that I'd played in my lifetime, just because of the positioning of it um, and the way I was able, you know, myself and the team were able to hold off, like, pretty much the entirety of the enemy team. So uh, hopefully this replay was helpful. Obviously, if you want to continue learning, uh, I'm going to make more in-depth videos about how winning and how wins and losses uh, happen. So, uh, feel free to subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.